I'm here to give a study this morning, and the study will be the queen bee emerges. When the queen bee is getting ready to emerge out of her cell, she will make what is called a pepping sound. As she chews away at the inside of her cell, making this pepping sound that will draw the worker bees from outside the cell to start chewing away at the bottom to release the queen quicker. There will also be another cell with another queen um, making this um, pepping sound, and she will also draw worker bees outside of the cell to release her quicker. Now the race is on. The first one out will kill that queen. When the queen that has been released first, um, she will then run around on the frame listening for the, um, the noise of the pepping, and when she realizes there is no more pepping sound, she will then mate. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thy aren't gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Um, Judges 13, 24. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. Uh, and the woman, the, the woman that was barren until she bare a son. A son is, be, is a builder of the family. And this family being the spiritual house um, the, ch uh, the children of the promised seed. Uh, this seed is of the stars, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all the these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Samson meaning sun man, sun like, for unto you who fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And I'm going to read Ju um, Judges 14, verse 5. And then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath and behold, a young lion roared against him. Timnath being an allotted portion to count or a sign of a territory. A young lion roared against him. Prophetically, when the queen emerges out of her cell as to rouse up, rise up, establish, to take back their land allotted, there will be the resistance, just as it was in Genesis 6. And I'm going to go to Genesis 6. Um, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, daughters being the spiritual sign of man, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They came, and um, sons of God being angelic beings, they came and they took wives uh, to resist this union of spirit and man and um in god's spirit his holy spirit and the lord said my spirit as in my holy spirit shall not always strive with man for he that he is also is flesh because he chose flesh over the spirit yet his days shall be 120 years uh, um, 120 means a divinely appointed time of waiting God will save 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, being the 144,000. Um, um, the pepping in the hive is when there is more than one queen in a hive. It is thought that the pepping is a battle cry to announce uh, her willingness to fight the other queen and to let the worker bees know she is um, strong and worthy um, for supporting the hive. Um, be sober as to be discreet, as to be careful in one's speech, especially in order to avoid cause and offense. Um, be vigilant, as to keep awake, watch, because your adversary, as in Satan, your arch enemy, the devil, as in the traducer, one that um, false accuses, uh, as a roaring lion walketh about as to walk at large, especially as proof of ability as a, as votary, which is a person who has made vows of dedication to a religious service as in a Nazarite, a holy man who's endowed with the spirit of the Lord. Um, he's claiming that he is, uh, um, uh, as, as, as of, a. Uh, a Nazarite, um, but he is of the synagogue of Satan. He claims he is of Judah, but he is not. He is of the synagogue of Satan. Um, and then six, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Rent as to rend away. Um, rend means to tear into two. Also, um, 
to cause uh, emotional pain, great emotional pain. We're going to go to Genesis, and we're going to come back there, but I'm going to go to Genesis 38, um, starting with verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Ar, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Uh, Judah meaning to be praised. Let him be praised. Tamar meaning palm tree. Um, also, uh, the female judge Deborah had her seat under the palm tree. Deborah meaning bee. The Hebrew word for bee is Deborah. The root um, is midbar, meaning wilderness. Deborah meaning bee. Bees are a community of insects which live in a perfect ordered arrangement. Their pollination is for our actual survival. The word and the bee provide life. The word feeds our spirit and the bee provides our physical nourishment. The bee is responsible for one out of three bites we ingest. We are to build up the many-membered body in unity as in one. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, and Father, and all there is above, and through all, and in you all. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. But to us there is but one God, the Father, whom are all things, and we are in him, and our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things in by one spirit, and we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and we all been made to drink uh, into one spirit. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way, as said the prophet Isaiah. We are one voice. We are to listen to the one voice, Jesus Christ, the, our high priest Melchizedek, which will be the vessel he will inhabit to represent him on the earth. There will um, be one, um, there will, they will be one, and we are one body, one voice, and that will be Jesus Christ. If you step out to speak above or against this one voice, you will be devoured. When Satan and his armies are released upon this earth, they will be extremely hostile with extreme hatred against God's children. They will be supernatural. You will not be able to fight them in the flesh. They will devour you because they are coming to devour flesh. The queen bee is the heart of the beehive. If there was not the queen, the hive would not exist. She builds the hive as a wise woman builds her house with a woman being the spiritual side of man. The queen bee releases an aroma that keeps the hive humming in unison. She will raise up the swarm for battle, sending out the drones to protect the hive and to conquer new territory. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. A hiss is a noise to attract bees and hiving or the sound to attract a person's attention. God's giving principles that hold Christians in fellowship are the same principles that keep a beehive together. One bee cannot live apart from the operation of the hive. If they assert their independence of one another, they will all quickly perish. We have been placed into one spiritual body with Christ as the head. He will draw, we will draw upon the Holy Spirit, and we will, uh, with, we will all mature together spiritually as one. When an invader comes to the hive, the bee will give up his life for the protection of the hive. You must be willing to give up uh, your life to protect the body from spiritual harm. Each of us has a specific duty in his army. Just as the bees, as the world is slipping away from the nectar of the sweet honey, God's word and truth is also slipping away. When the four winds are released upon this earth, God's Holy Spirit will be withdrawn from this earth. It will only be in those that have took of the marriage, receiving their information from the high pe uh, priest Melchizedek, um, that will be the two witnesses. Um, just as the queen bees, bees aroma, there were the two Deborahs in God's word. Um, the first Deborah um, was Rebecca. Um, she was um, the nurse. Uh, she was um, the first Deborah was Rebecca's nurse. She was the nurturer. And then we have Deborah in the book of Judges. She was the powerhouse. Her weapon be in her words. She brought righteous judgment and order out of chaos. 
Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, devoted her life to Jacob's seed. She was the worker bee to ensure Jacob's prophetic future. Once God brings Jacob back to where their relationship began in Bethel, Mount Moriah, Deborah dies. The importance of her role is the field where she is buried, Bethel, Mount Moriah. They called it the Oak of Weeping. She was buried under an oak tree, symbolizing her strength and service to Abraham's seed. The sweet honey of her diligent service, being a mother figure, a nurse, a counselor to Jacob and his family. And after Deborah dies, God then appears unto Jacob to reestablish the promise of the covenant by changing of his name. His nature is marked by the changing of his name. He is no longer the heel grabber, the supplanter, representing of him holding on to another man's ankle. Supplanter is someone on taking the place of uh, of one as in taking the place of god his mouth he is israel he will rule as god allowing god's vo voice to prevail over man's voice one who struggles and overcomes with god he is no longer in need of a mother figure a nurturer he is now ready to walk in his prophetic destiny no longer in need of the milk of the nursing of deborah this being the first queen that will build up the nest in unison, br um, bringing forth the spiritual man born through the living waters, she leads them to Mount Moriah Bethel, the spiritual staircase where he will ascend to the top to meet I am at the top. Jesus Christ, the first begotten who went before us, who was crucified on Mount Moriah, le releasing of his fleshly body, fleshly garment taking on the celestial ascending the staircase being the first begotten of the spirit then we have the flaming bee deborah she was the fourth judge of israel a woman of flames of torches and of lamps she used to sit under the palm tree between Rhea and bethel in the hill country of ephraim and they came to her for judgment she being the only judge that was female the first deborah was associated with a tree where she was buried in bethel under an oak tree and then we have judge deborah the judge that sits under the palm tree in bethel palm trees represent of god's elect who stand upright they do not bow the knee uh, to baal um, they will judge in righteousness. Uh, she is the judge of Bethel, the house of God, the many-membered body of spirit-filled people, prophetically, um, um, people prophetically. She was the fourth judge. And then we have the fourth son of Jacob, who was given the authority to rule over Israel. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, without a teraphim. And afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days, this being the last five months. They will serve their Lord and David their king, who I will raise up in these days, and at that time, and I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow unto David and shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. God's elect will declare judgment. It will happen in the land, the land being Mount Zion, Jerusalem, where truth can be found. Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Uh, it Jerusalem is a spiritual condition, not a geographical area. This is a spiritual war. His kingdom is not of this world. It is spiritual of the increase of his government and the peace of his government. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom as in king and his dominion be in heaven and earth to order and establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. This is uh, as a key in shutting a lock. Will lay upon his shoulders. Um, they shall, um, he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. Inquire your ear and come unto me. Here and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the same mercies of David. You will have to open your spiritual eyes and ears. The key of David is unlocking the door that you will be able to see with your spiritual ears, unlocking the door of your heart. Um, 
as in the circumcision, this kingdom being under our high priest Melchizedek, Melka, uh, king, Zadok of the just, the king and the priest, Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah will open it. And we're going back to Genesis 38, and I'm going to read verse 6 again. And Judah took a wife for Ar, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar, and Ar, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord um, slew him. This being the firstborn of the flesh, they are not usable vessels um, in God's um, kingdom, for um, he is of the spiritual realm. Uh, Jesus says to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. We are of the stars, the celestial. Um, you cannot be in the flesh to be in his kingdom. Uh, and, uh, and Judah said unto uh, Onan, go uh, in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to um, thy brother. Onan meaning troubled iniquity, also strong, vigorous. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. This seed line would come Christ. Um, he spilled the seed on the ground. The ground is what Cain tilled. God told Cain, when thy, uh, when thy tillest the ground, it, should, it will not henceforth yield unto thee uh, her strength. He is rejecting the seed line of Christ as was Cain before him. Uh, and the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. And then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Shelah meaning to heap up uh, a mass, uh, as in harmony. Um, as, um, they're um, brethren of the flesh. Um, and in the process of time, um, the daughter of, uh, Shua, Judah's wife died and Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shears to Timnath, uh, he and his friend Hira, the Adomite, um, this being, um, the portion assigned Timnath, Hira meaning noble race, Adomite meaning justice of the people, um, and it was told to Mar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. Um, she covered herself with a veil, wrapped herself as with the mantle. For she saw that Sheila, as in the heap up, uh, as in a mass, a harmony, was grown as to magnify proudly, and she was not given to him to wife. She saw as to spiritually see, that she is not to be a wife with him. Sheila as in a mass, harmony, for she is righteous as the palm tree, and she is also, um, the palm tree is also a sign of triumph and victory. When Judah saw her, he thought, um, her to be a harlot because she had covered her face and he turned unto her by the way and said go to I pray thee let me come in unto thee for he know, knew not that she was his daughter-in-law and she said what will thy give me that thy mayest come into me uh, he was looking for a harlot he thinking of in his fleshly desires over his spiritual desires. And Jesse, uh, uh, and then 17, and he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, will thy give me a pledge till thy send it? Um, and Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, son unto Saul. Prophetically, David will come with this kid through her, through Tamar. And he said, I will send thee a kid. Okay. And then 18. And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? And she said, thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it to her and came in to her and she conceived by him. Um, 
remember she is wearing um, the mantle, um, this being uh, the turning over of power, as in spiritual power. Uh, signet as a signature ring, as a symbol of a family heritage. Bracelet um, as a line of thread, and he brought me hither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. The gate is where you go for judgment. And there was giving me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. And a staff is for correction and also for leading. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of their, the, um, thy enemies. She said in thy hand, as in power. And he gave this ruling power of Judah unto her. And he came into her and became one, and she, as to become one. And she conceived this, um, this being the promised seed. Um, he gave um, the, um, the signet, the bracelets, and the staff do not belong to him to give to what he thought was a harlot. Um, they are gods. And then, um, and she's a righteous woman. And he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. Um, uh, well, let me go to 20. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. By the hand, as in power of his friend, Adamite, meaning justice of the people, this being true spiritual justice, not as was Judah in the flesh, to receive his pledge uh, from the woman's hand, this being the womb that will bring forth the promised seed. It is now in her hand. And then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was, okay, and um, they said that there was no harlot in this place, because there was no harlot there. It was Tamar, a righteous woman. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of that place said, There was no harlot in this place. Uh, in this place, as in Timnath, the portion assigned. And Judah said, Let her... Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I send this kid, and thy has not found her. Uh, let her take it to her, he's saying. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with a child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her um, be, be burnt. Uh, when she was... Um, and um, this this wasn't by whoredom. It, it, she's the rightful seed. Um, and when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man, whose these are, am I with child? And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and the bracelets and the staff? When she was brought forth as to come forth, she sent to her father-in-law, not as in 20, verse 24, when Judah said, bring her forth, when she was brought forth spiritually to come forth at her appointed time, not by man's demands, but by God's, she sent to her father-in-law, she is in control by the man whose these are in my with child. She said, discern, think spiritually, whose are these, these signet, the bracelet and the staff? They belong to God. And that is who she is spiritually becoming one with. She is spiritually has been past the signet, the bracelets and the staff. Um, God will choose who he will give um, it to, not man. And he chose a righteous woman. Uh, judges, and then we're going to go to, um, I'm going to read Judges, um, back to Judges um, chapter 14, um, verse 5. I, I'm going to read that again. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. 
And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father and his mother what he'd done, uh, rent as to tear in two. He had nothing in his hand, for it belongs um, to her prophetically. She will take down that roaring lion that claims he is of Judah, but he is not, but he is of the synagogue of Satan. Um and he went down and he talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. This being the carcass of a lion. This lion is dead, defeated. And I'm going to go um, to prophetically when it's defeated, Isaiah 14. And I'm going to read um, starting from four that thy shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how had the oppressor seized the golden city cease? The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers who who, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet, and they break forth in the singing. Yea, the fire, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thy art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It is, hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Aren't thou also become weak as we? Aren't thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How aren't thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How aren't thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thy is said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. We are the, are the stars of God. He is coming to exalt himself above the stars of God, the promised seed. God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, as in speaking for I am. Yet thy shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thy art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet the moon being the lesser light under her feet that carcass that will be under her uh, that was underfoot um, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars uh, as in the government um, of of the righteous government of the king and kings and the lord of lords a swarm uh, as a, a company a congregation of bees as in the sense of an orderly motion and honey as what was in their mouths sweet as honey that is the little book of judgments that makes their belly bitter um, i'm going to go to revelation 10 um starting with um, verse 8 And the voice which I heard from heaven spoken to me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel. It is in the hand as in the a power of the angel, an angel being a spiritual messenger, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Um, the sea as uh, what the beast will come out of, the multitudes, um, nations, and, and tongues, um, and then the earth as in pliable, I mean, um, firm, not pliable. And I went unto the angel and I said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. 
And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter because it's going to be bringing judgments. And he said unto me, thy must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues. Um, the people, multitudes, nations, and tongues is what the beast will rise up out of. That is who you are to prophesy against. God's elect will bring these judgments through the commands of the queen bee Deborah that took down the mighty oppressor of God's people by her words, her leadership as the queen bee. And I'm going to read Judges um, 5, 7 through 13. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose. And I arose a mother in Israel. Deborah meaning bee. The queen bee arising. And thy ch they ch choose new gods. Then was war in the gates as in the judgment gates. And there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord, this being the governors, being God's elect. Speak ye that ride on white asses, you that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of drawing water. There shall I rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. And then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thy son and Abanon. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have a dominion over the mighty. And we're going to end this today, Alec. You have a great day until the morning.